Um, so before I go to sleep, I actually create a protection around my property every single time. And I am actually able to connect with some deceased friend that recently passed. And I, I am able to like get him, you know, to tell me things and connect and whatever. So I am like, TJ, come on, help me here. So we do things and we move the energy around. And whenever I teach seminars, I open a vortex. So like what you're asking me is, do I use the three yantra to uh, create success? I use, I don't, don't use the three yantra anymore. I, I just move the energy. And I, I, at one time I was teaching an uh, introduction to servant leadership for a client. And every time, every morning, I show up an hour early before anybody does. So I can start moving the energy in the classrooms. And one time I was like getting so into it that just like, I just saw opalescent wings, like an upgrade of my hands into opalescent wings. So I could move the energy faster, stronger. And I created a vortex. And it's funny because like the classes, they're always like, oh my gosh, it's like the best class ever. I mean, yeah, I have some skill as the presenter, but just like creating an, an environment where the energy moves nicely is super important. So moving the energy for your business, moving the energy for, for your, your, whatever you're doing for your house and all of that, that's very important to do. And it creates the groundwork so where you don't need any of those things. Um, and, and it's, it's, you know, um, shit, like even the last time I did ayahuasca, I haven't done it in probably since December. So it's going to be almost eight months. Um, it was one of the craziest ones because like the last several times I was had like kicked my butt really nicely. I was like, okay, I, I come here not to get scolded, not to, you know, be told how I'm fucking up. I just want to like really get some tools, bro. Like seriously, help me out. And I want to connect and, and get to know myself. And they're like, okay, so all right. So I take it and suddenly the Christ consciousness comes and it's a massive, massive gold in like matrix code and he's like okay you wanted me you needed some of this here it is so he throws some of that matrix gold stuff on me i'm like i'm not worthy of this why would you even i mean there's a dude i'm an atheist right that, that only means like i don't believe in a god and whenever i was connecting with the christ consciousness he's like i don't see myself as a god i'm just an entity trying to bring balance into the equation and you can be in my team. So handed me some of that wonderful pixie dust of sorts. And I was like, whoa. And he said, dude, this is kind of funny. Like, I always keep my gun in my backpack. He said, think of me as your gun in your backpack. You're only going to use me when shit hits the fan. All right? Don't misuse it. I'm like, okay, yeah. So, like, there's, like, 30 other people in the room, and I'm probably the only one that has a gun in my backpack. But he's like explaining to me how to use like this energy and, and moving things around and whatever, I'm like, whoa. And like I, I've gotten lately to a point like uh, said I had some poison ivy and she got it and, and like, you know, because we tend to hug sometimes. Like I got it on my arm too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so itchy now. And I just kind of like. Whoo. In an hour, it was gone. In one hour, I had nothing else. So. I mean, I was able to, like, you know, bring animals back to life and, to, like, I'll do all this crazy shit, but, like, to, to get to the point where, like, I just connect with the Christ consciousness and just, like, and just goes away. Like, holy crap. And Susan's like, yeah, it wasn't poison ivy then. I'm like, yes, it was. You, sh you had it. So I kind of did it to her, and it went, like, 75% better on hers because she was, like, so, like, I mean, like, yeah. So, like, you can, it, it's something that, um, and I asked, like, the Christ was like, so what the hell's up with all these, like, uh, guys that are on TV talking about your name and just making lots of money about it? He said, I gave them the gift. They misused it. That's their karma. You know, like, he doesn't really sweat it. He's like, yeah, I mean, they're going to pay for it. So, you know, I, I give the gift to whomever wants it. And whatever way you want to use it is how you're going to get uh, your reward. Like, cause I mean, every action has a reaction. So, so I was like, you know, it's kind of like when my mom used to always give me, uh, like tell me, it's like, you have to help without expecting anything in return. You have to help without really uh, thinking about it. You just like, people need help, you help them. That's the end of the story. And kind of that's like the, the motto of this Christ consciousness. Like, you know, if they do whatever, that's their deal. They're going to pay for it. So mm -hmm. crazy, crazy.
Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm so floored. So I don't even know how I'm going to address this. Maybe, well, God, I gotta keep going. Okay. Well, first of all, okay. Just, just to, I'm pausing at the fact that you're atheist and have like one of the most dynamic spiritual lives that I've like heard about, read about and, and, and witnessed, you know, on occasion. So, um, Cause I don't know that I've ever, like, I definitely understand like people that who claim that have vibrant spiritual lives, but don't necessarily claim to be religious, but to have like vibrant spiritual life and then claim to be atheist. Like I do not believe in a divinity or a divine, you know, a divine. So I don't know if I have a question about that. I guess I'm just saying like, wow, like that's really, that's really, um, fascinating. weird. That's fascinating to me. Yeah. I, you know, and, th and then the fact that once you cross the veil, it um, doesn't, it didn't seem to matter because the divinity that you don't acknowledge gave you power anyway. I mean, it's like the whole, like all of it is, and then, and then the fact that you're one of the first people that I've ever met to, you know, be able to claim to have um, been a conduit of a miracle. And this has been one of my greatest frustrations because um, I was raised in the Christian church and the New Testament is where I, you know, gravitated because I was like, well, uh, you know, just the way the teaching is, I mean, like that, that's where this faith tradition comes to life in the resurrection, you know, of this, you know, death is defied. And so boom, and there's this victory in that. And, um, and so when I look, say at, you know, the embodiment, you know, Jesus as an embodiment of Christ consciousness, in the, in the miracles that he did and the defying of material law that he did. Um, and with this promise, you know, that those who come after him would do greater, okay? And I, I mean, and I would never hear anyone from the pulpit talk about that. And I was, you know, for over 20 years, that has been in my head that, you know, cause I followed and still do in, in as far as beliefs go, um, but, you know, follow those, those, those teachings, but all, but with this, um, persistent dissatisfaction, feeling impotent, I'm like, where's my new Testament power? I got water. Can I turn it to wine? Can I feed the masses with one loaf of bread and two fish, you know, or in your case, you know, could, if, if someone that I love is, you know, is in pain with poison ivy or something else, can I be an agent of healing for them? And so, I mean, and I think that that's why I've been, you know, attracted to esoteric um, paths and just wanting to explore that, you know, that bridge between matter and non-matter, because that's, that's ultimately where I'm wanting to be. You said that those who come after you would do even greater than you. And I see a bunch of impotence, you know, where we look at the things going on in the world and, and most of us are just kind of like marveling, like, okay, don't trust this, don't trust that, don't trust the state, don't trust the media, don't trust, don't trust. Where are the acts of power? What, like, why am I not being an agent of power, an agent of change? Why can't I go to Charlottesville and command peace? You see, that's the expectation that I have. That's the hope that I have. Those are the questions that I'm, you know, that I'm asking in my, in my meditations. That's what I want to do in this embodiment and in this incarnation. That's what I want yeah, to do. I, and so I hear you, you know, telling me instances of you doing this, Luis. It's amazing. Well, um, I think those are two different things. Like, number one, um, you know, as far as like, you know, the, the, the uh, could be called like supernatural powers, like they, it's not like I can't turn water into wine, you know, like, I can't do that. Like, I, so I don't know how real. Why? That is. Okay. And, 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 you know, like the whole idea of just demanding an entire city, like you would have to have a lot of leadership to be able to do that. So it's not just like some woo that happens. So like, I, I think there's a big difference in, in those things. Um, another thing, like to be able, like I was explaining, you know, towards the beginning of this conversation, like to be able to get to the big, big power, you have to expand your, like the feeling of the totality of yourself to where you're everything. And that's like the law of, of, of like the universe. When you get to that point, you're able to 
channel the energy to to transmutate things. I'm I'm just in my infancy and in my healing. Path, I'm just you know? gonna push back. I'm gonna push back, Luis, because there was an animal that was dead, and then because of what you allowed to flow through you, it was not dead. Okay, that's a big deal. You seem really calm about that, but that's huge. And so, if those circumstances could be changed, then I just suggest. That something like Charlottesville, why, if death can be defied, why would Charlottesville be perceived as greater than death, as more I formidable than death? You, you, it's not that it's more, it's just like when you have the will of so many individuals, you can't do that. Like, I mean, I was, I was able to do that with a cicada that was just on the ground and I, you know, and then with another little bird. I mean, like tiny things that it was just one on one. You know, you cannot just suddenly command. 500,000 people like, you know, you shall listen to me and go home. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, okay, 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 hold on. Okay, so let's remove the word command and let's just say in terms of being an agent for peace, like those, the guys, I, the group of uh, monks, I, um, let me see, they, they're connected with the transcendental um, meditators. Um, I forgot. Okay, so they were doing something and they were calling them even like the floating yogis or something, you know, like they bounce and they kind of levitate or something. But anyway, they, it was maybe a group of a hundred of them and they, and they, it was an experiment. They just, they, they said, we're going to put our thoughts on DC, Washington, DC. And they focused on Washington, DC because they were at that time it was going through like a horrible crime spritz. And, um, and at the, t and so, the, and I, I'm going to link, I'm going to find the, find the, the article and study and I'll link to it to go with this post to show but it was not even contested that there, like, I don't know if people could write it off as a coincidence, but there was a, a streak of crime and door and there was, and there was an, a disruption of that crime that corresponded to the hours that these uh, monks were meditating, thinking peaceful thoughts toward DC. So along those lines, I'm certainly not, I'm voluntarist. I'm certainly not suggesting, Oh, let's just go and use this Christ consciousness and usurp, you know, the free will of people. No, but um, I guess I am of the opinion that any power that would be delegated to me or entrusted to me, I am to use it clearly as, you know, as an agent of good. And I determine that violence is not good. I mean, unless it's self-defense, you know, but even then that's the lesser best that's the, you know, so anyway, so I know like, I'm like, I'm just, I'm for peace and I want to use anything. If I can, if I'm articulate, if I can write, if I can talk and if I can learn something of how to conduct the thought, that loving thought of Christ consciousness, um, in helpful ways, you know, to those I love and, and beyond, then I, then I'm interested in doing that. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think that there is, you know, it's like give a man a fish, heal for a day, teach him how to fish, heal forever. So I think that the real power is on continuing to be present and teach people how to do these things. Because if you're going to be like the uh, Atlas, always carrying the world on your shoulders, you're going to get tired. Nobody wants a job, you know, like... Uh, like I was also being shown how like most people that were the oracles and, and all of these things, that was burdensome. You know, that's why like people will give them food and we'll give them money and we'll give them like a place to live because back in the day, whenever all these people were coming out, um, they, they didn't want it, but it was there. But now people look for power and want all the goodies because they got jealous. They're like, Oh gee, how come like, Erica, the Oracle is getting all these goodies and not me. So I want to pretend to be powerful. So all that's to say is being in that place where you're the savior of the world. is not sustainable. It's not good for you. Mm. It's not good for people. No, 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 no. Like, but if yeah. you're just going to like say, okay, we're going to meditate, you know, like, but then when you're not meditating, things go back to the same. So what I'm trying to say is like, mm. I think it's more sustainable to like a like be able to present the tools for people to do their own development and their own change. No? Yes, for sure. For sure. And to, and, and to multiply good behavior. So to say like, you don't have to be living a completely monastic life in Iowa 
you know, sequest, you know, I mean, like you can be an urban contemporary person and you can do. So I would even suggest with this video, I mean, like with the, you know, I'm in Mexico, but I'm feeling the tenderness of what's going on in the States. Okay. And I mean, I mean, how, wherever, it's how could we not feel it? And so to realize that, like, that I can be a part of the solution. I, there is balm that I can add, just even in the, I guess, like even in just us reminding ourselves and, and others that watch this, you know, that thoughts are things and they can be directed, just like that gun, you those guns you have, and you point them and you shoot them and they hit a target. And so the thoughts, the mind is no different. It's disseminating bullets. What kind of bullets are you shooting? You know, I'm gonna shoot, I wanna shoot bullets of, of um, you know, I'm going to even go deeper than just, you know, just, I mean, yes, you know, yes, love and, and forgiveness and peace and, but even just, you know, to, just to pause, just, you know, to reflect. Um, because when I'm trying to, like, I was trying to uh, stay current with what's going on and, and it's like, it's, it's the forest of hatred is so thick. You can't even hardly see through it, you know? And so, but I can I can't understand, I can't feel the pain, you know, of, of, of the left and the right, the, you know, blacks and whites. I can feel the pain of, of both. And um, I am both, you know, you are both. We are, you know, um, so, so on that end, when I just am sitting with, yeah, you know, these, these huge problems and the way to me to not become overwhelmed by them and to not get swallowed by them is to, you know, this is, I don't know, maybe this sounds crazy, but this is what I've been doing is to say, wow, you're big. But the love that is growing in me is bigger. It's bigger. I will meet you. I will meet you. Like, I mean, just even the decision to say, no, you don't have permission to eat and consume me. Hatred, rage, you don't. I'm not on the menu for you. In fact, maybe I'll eat you. And so that's what I would like to see. I would like to, and maybe like talking like this, you and I talking like this with each other and people seeing this, they're going to feel it too. They're probably feeling frustrated and helpless and angry. I'm, you know, and I mean, and how this plays out at work or in church and among, you know, mixed communities and all that kind of thing, wondering what the hell to do, you know, realize that your mind is a gun, but what you shoot does not have to, you know, be fatal. It could be the opposite. It really could. So I would, so that's the kind of thing I want to say. It's like the point of all these ancient perennial lifelong traditions it, in my mind, it was to be of useful purpose for the pain and burden of life that, you know, that we're living now. And so that's why I say, you know, like, what does Sri Antra have to do with poverty? What does meditation have to do with Charlottesville? Because if they don't come together, and I know you're all about this, I know you're all about this, you know, spirituality that, you know, can get you somewhere, can put food in your stomach, that can, you know, the practical spirituality. So... Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, part of that practical spirituality is where I see that people, uh, their awareness is also based on the hierarchy of needs. And like the vast majority of people that tend to be like super hateful or, or that do crime or that do like crazy shit, you know, their, their needs are not being met. So it's all going back to the needs. Like if people don't have enough food or they don't have enough, like they're living in a way where they have to like super super hustle and not because they like to or want to but because like shit you know like i'm you know a paycheck behind or i'm a paycheck uh you know one paycheck from like being homeless or or because whatever reason it may be right mm -hmm. so their thinking goes to survival mode and nothing else matters yeah. so that's why you see that like people with like uh, lower education uh lower um income they they're, they're I'm then sorry, it, my doors are open. I don't have air conditioning. <laughs> so those are dogs yeah. outside. Lord, their neighborhoods are dirtier. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, they have a bunch of uh, graffiti. They have, like, because they're still, like, in that just me mentality. I need to survive, you know. Just, just so what that meant. Once people are moving into a place where, like, okay, I'm not worried about survival anymore. We move to the second chakra, which is, like, maybe I have time to reproduce now. Mm -hmm. You know, and then from that reproduction, it's like, okay, the power, maybe I have some power now. What am I going to do with that power? So it's really important that when we're in the first chakra, when we're little, it heals. And it, 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 it said, I'm not of the opinion that we're going to heal the world just by meditating away. I think that we're going to heal the world by 
being present, by helping people, by, by giving them jobs. You know, like a bunch of people hate on like the, um, I guess, big corporations and the Whole Foods and, and you know, all those kinds of things. But because of those things, people are able to gain jobs because they're able to make money and, and they focus on So the real power for healing the world is the free market, in my opinion. So how we are able to provide for that, you know, like creating jobs, helping people and, and just helping one another as peers. Mm. That's how we change things. So like, I mean, yeah, you know, like the idea of uh, I'm an atheist just because the idea that I don't I have never, ever met a, a God, you know, it's just like either stronger people than me or not a stronger peers, you know, but I don't see them as your God. It's like, just you're stronger, you're bigger. What am I going to do, you know? To, to like down here on earth, like, yeah, it's the same thing. You know, you may have more resources. I, I may have less or whatever, but we can work together and, and, and we can make um, this a better life, a better world for everybody. So for sure. it, 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 the way I see it, that, that's more in, in the awareness that I've gained, even though I can do some crazy, I'm like, I mean, this is just another story. We're driving towards, Louisiana and there's this stretch of like 30 miles where there's no gas stations and we're like down to eat and I just concentrate really heavy um, on, on one of my gurus and suddenly like the needle just goes up a quarter of a, like I'm not shitting you and Susan will not let me lie so like I mean when you're able to do things but still believe that the real power for change is the free market it's the, like I mean that it doesn't matter how many tricks I can do if I cannot get people fed, if I cannot get people like to have a, 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 you know, sleep in a peaceful environment, you know, those things come through less regulation, less government and more privatization and, and, and free market and people being able to get jobs where they don't have to really worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, for sure. I'm, you know, I'm all, um, about a non-dual reality also. So I would never suggest, uh, you know, like meditation alone will save the world, but definitely um, mindful directed thought in addition to the action makes a difference. And Absolutely. that's, and, and, and that's what I mean. And I think that that's, um, you know, so I mean like you do it, you're really diligent about cultivating your inner life. I do it. Um, I don't think that that's a, a dominant habit by any means. I think, you know, so that's how come I, I speak so much about, about, about the internal aspect, but I completely agree with you that structurally we have like systemic issues that um, are, I don't, you know, addressed like kind of brilliantly it, um, and even in a self-corrected way through free market principles. So, um, and then I would say, well, even that would have me want to, you know, like direct my thought toward, you, you know, like envisioning, um, you know, my peers, who are my peers, you know, the people that I, that I continue to love, you know, friends in Chicago that um, may have really statist ways and like, and to envision them, you know, coming into um, an understanding of self-rulership, self-ownership, voluntarism, you know, and like seeing that, seeing that kind of like that form of um, political and economic enlightenment happen for them on an individual basis, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you know, the idea of just spreading the word because everybody's either, you know, you're a Republican or a Democrat, but unbeknownst to them, they're the same team with different faces. So like just creating and, and showing people that there are alternatives because people don't know that there are alternatives. So even if they go for a libertarian candidate, I would much rather have them do that. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but it's better. And, you know, like, I think that a lot of uh, voluntarists are like, oh yeah, you know, like it's, it's all or nothing. Well, that's not how life works. Life is not black and white. There's so many shades of gray in between. So if they're able to gradually move, which is how most of us do anyway, you know, like we cannot expect people to just go from A to B at once. So being present and like showing them the inconsistencies of the political process, the inconsistencies of how, you know, the, the, the really good heart wielded, uh, uh, wielded uh, legislations are actually just good. And they're not even good in writing when you read them, but you know, like how they just hurt more people. Um, so 
And yes, you know, part of uh, conscious capitalism is the idea of being great at business results, great at servant leadership, and also having uh, spiritual awareness, because I think that those are, are the huge foundations of a peaceful and prosperous world. Mm. Now that sounds like a good resting spot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to thank the people that joined us um, and we will pick up with part two.